it's time for the second installment in our Moon Monday miniseries, where we'll teach you how the history of the moon has affected the world in some way. Last week, we talked about how the Babylonians had figured out Saros cycles, which basically predict how often a solar eclipse will appear. Who cares, right? Well, thanks to this information, the Greek philosopher Thales predicted a solar eclipse that helped end a war, restore an economy, and build a philosophy school that trained a couple of history's greatest minds. Here's the story from Dr. David Warmflash. But in terms of the eclipse cycles, Thales learned about this. And in 585 BCE, during a war between a couple, at, at least two empires, there may have been a third one involved. But one, of our, one empire was the Medians Empire, the Medes, sort of in the area of Persia. And the other were the Lydian Empire that controlled a big chunk of Asia Minor, including Ionia. So the Ionians were Greeks who had been there for centuries because the Dorian invasion had pushed everybody all over the place. And they were living along the coast of Asia Minor and along those, those islands along the coast. And the Lydians were, were controlling them, and they wanted an end to the war. And knowing these Saros cycles from the Babylonians, Thales was able, who was also a mathematician, he was able to calculate the likelihood of an eclipse. So he probably didn't know the moon was getting in front of the sun and that's what was causing it, but he knew the mathematics of it. And he turned out he was, he ended up being right. And he went to the, the, uh, the commanders of both sides and he told them the gods are really upset about this war. We need an end to the war. And to, to demonstrate that the gods are going to darken the sky on Tuesday at three o'clock or whatever. And he was, he got a little bit lucky because these cycles don't predict the, the eclipses that, you know, that precisely, but a little bit of luck also, and he got it right, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> this guy knows what he's talking about, and the war came to an end, and Thales was also able to negotiate pretty good terms for the Ionians, which was good for Ionian business, because basically the Ionians were business people, they were maritime traders and all that. Thales himself had a certain amount of celebrity status because he predicted a really good olive harvest one year. And so he bought up all the olive presses and he got to be a really rich guy because that. So he had this money and he had this fame by ending the war and that helped him establish a, a philosophy school on the island of Miletus and people were flocking to come and, and study with him. And some people that we hear about were students of Thales. Pythagoras, for instance. Pythagoras was one of Thales' students he eventually had a really he didn't agree with Thales' whole approach to how, how you obtain knowledge, but he started out as one of Thales' students. He had another student, Anaximander, who is the earliest person we know of to come up with an evolutionary theory about the, the emergence of uh, humanity from fish, that we started out with fish. And he reasoned that fish don't need their, their, their mothers. They just come out of an egg and they either get eaten or they could survive and so he reasoned that human infants couldn't have, we couldn't have been humans all the time because infants can't survive and the first human would have to be an infant and then you have a chicken and egg problem. So he, he reasoned it back to, back to fish. Next week, we'll jump ahead to the Middle Ages and hear a fascinating story about the origins of astronomy. In the meantime, Dr. David Warmflash's book is called Moon, an Illustrated History, and you can pre-order it on Amazon today. You can also follow him on Twitter at Cosmic Evolution.